Welcome to Geography 485 585L Internet Mapping, Module 5.1 Platforms and GeoServer Introduction. In this lecture, we will be providing a review of the services oriented architecture model that was presented earlier. We will discuss the concept of a server platform in the context of being able to provide geospatial services. We will provide a brief introduction to a number of online mapping server applications, both commercial off the shelf and open source. We will specifically talk about GeoServer as a geospatial data services platform. Start a discussion around the process of working with GeoServer from the administrative and management perspective and finish with a link to a demonstration that will be provided um, later. As we come back to the concept of our geospatial services oriented architecture, we can review the components of that architecture that we have worked with thus far in this course. Focusing first on the users and client tier where they are focusing on the internet standards provided by the Open Geospatial Consortium, web standards including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, documentation about services provided by XML, with the interaction with remote servers, whether they're Google, Do Google uh, Maps or using the open layers uh, JavaScript framework, interaction with remote data and services to provide interactive mapping clients through a client interface based on web browsers. We've talked about the Open Geospatial Consortium services and service standards particularly the OGC web map, web feature, and web coverage services, and worked some with those standards in being able to uh, submit requests to those services that will provide the service metadata for those services or the documentation for those services, compose um, requests that may be submitted even from a web browser, and then experimented with the integration of those services into desktop GIS clients. Now we are starting to work on the data tier, the lowest level in this services oriented architecture where the data are managed and from which you may be able to publish Open Geospatial Consortium services based on your data. In that context, we will be using the GeoServer server platform as the, the tool for being able to take our own data and share them over the web using the open standards that we've already discussed. When we're talking about services and the delivery of services over the web, one of the key components that we really haven't addressed in detail yet is the server platform itself. When we're talking about server platforms, we're talking about the computers that are, that are connected to the internet that are actually listening to and responding to requests from client applications. And when we're talking about server platforms, particularly when we're hosting Open Geospatial Consortium services or other web applications, there are some components of that server that we need to think about. The first being the operating system, or as, as you might think of it as the software environment that all of the other applications running on that computer um, run. So you're most commonly going to encounter operating systems on servers that are analogous or, or based on the same operating systems that you may be familiar with in your desktop application environments. Particularly Windows or Windows Server, the Macintosh operating systems, or Linux and the various flavors of Linux and Unix are all operating systems 
that you can run geospatial services on top of. One of the other key applications that you must be running on your server platform is a web server. This is the application that runs continuously, um, sometimes in the background on the computer, that is listening for incoming requests over the internet connection on that server so that it can respond to those requests. So it is essentially monitoring the, the network connection for incoming requests that it should respond to. Common uh, web servers that you may encounter include Apache or Microsoft's IIS. Finally, you have the mapping server. This is the specialized software or application that is available on the server platform, typically available behind the web server, that actually enables the mapping specific capabilities of your application. So in that context, they are uh, being able to read the geospatial data sets and generate products that are then delivered through the web server ultimately back to the clients that, that request them. And these mapping servers will often um, support a number of the Open Geospatial Consortium service interfaces, sometimes in addition to other proprietary um, uh, protocols that they have developed as well. When we're talking about online mapping server applications, there are a wide variety to choose from, including a number of commercial off-the-shelf applications, including ArcGIS Server, which is a version of ESRI's um, ArcGIS platform that is designed specifically to be used as a host for geospatial data and services. Cubeworks is a company that has been long producing server applications implementing the Open Geospatial Consortium standards. And their current product is called the Cubeworks SDI Suite, which is a uh, comprehensive application that uh, not only su provides support for the OGC services, but also provides um, catalog services and other, other uh, capabilities related to the discovery and access to data um, as files or products in addition to the Open Geospatial Consortium services. AirDOS Apollo is another variation on that theme as it is another platform that is designed to provide um, so somewhat turnkey capabilities for being able to publish geospatial data sets over the web for um, ease of access. And, um, and it includes, then again, support for the Open Geospatial Consortium services. In addition to these commercial off-the-shelf applications, two other very commonly used open source applications include MapServer, um, a long-standing product that, uh, has, uh, that supports in addition to its own custom templating and mapping language. And GeoServer, the platform that we are using in this class as our, um, our open source uh, geospatial data publication system. Each of these applications, whether it's the commercial or open source applications, um, additional information for these can be accessed through the info links provided um, in, this, in the notes for the class. GeoServer, again, is the application that we are focusing on in the context of this class. And GeoServer is an open source, open standards uh, supporting geospatial web services platform. This means that the source code is available for anybody to download and modify and redistribute as they like, um, and that it supports the open standards for geospatial publication, including and primarily the open standards developed by the Open Geospatial Consortium. When we're talking about open source software, in particular, 
the Geo server is published under the, the GNU general public license. This is a specific license that is related to um, open source software. GeoServer supports a variety of versions of the web map, web feature, and web coverage services. So is is actually a very uh, flexible platform for being able to publish data in a variety of standards um, through integration of data into the system. GeoServer is written in Java as a web application and is commonly hosted on um, the Jetty web server and a Java servlet engine. These are essentially a set of related uh, uh, application platforms where Jetty is providing the, the web server capabilities of listening for incoming requests from the, from the internet, passing those requests to the J Java servlet engine where the, the servlets that are hosted within that actually perform the computation and product generation, the products of which are then actually then returned to the HTTP server, Jetty, and then returned to the client that requested them. Since GeoServer is Java-based, whatever platform it is running on must have an appropriate version of Java installed. When working with GeoServer, you must, must of course first install it onto a server or have access to a server that already has it installed. You can actually uh, put a version of it on your own computer, uh, potentially using uh, as a path of least resistance, one of the operating system in independent binary versions that are essentially self-contained that you can just download and as long as you have a suitable version of Java installed on your computer, whether they're, whether a Mac, Windows, or Linux, um, it is self-contained so that you can actually just run it on, on, your, on a, your computer or on another computer. This is a self-contained system that includes the Jetty HTTP server, and the other specific components required to run GeoServer as a self-contained system. It supports Windows, the Mac um, OS X and Linux, but you need to pay attention to the operating system specific configuration instructions that are provided as a part of the installation because there are variations from system to system in the particulars of how you install and configure it once you have uh, put it onto your, onto your computer. You also can integrate GeoServer into an existing Java, Java web servlet, servlet application, such as Apache Tomcat. Um, so this is a model where you might have access to a server that is already configured using Apache Tomcat. And in that scenario, there's a web archive or WAR file that you can place into an appropriate location in that Apache Tomcat installation to be able to make that um, the GeoServer application available through that existing Tomcat installation. Finally, there are operating system specific installers that also include an integrated web server or HTTP server where these are specific to either the Windows or the Mac operating system. Depending on your level of uh, control over the system that you're installing uh, GeoServer onto, any or all of these options may be worth considering. When we're talking about the interaction of clients with GeoServer, we need to take a quick look at essentially the interaction model that is going on. So we have out on the, out on the internet client applications such as the, an open layers application that you, might have, that you might develop that is using the OGC web map services standard or a desktop GIS application like ArcGIS or Quantum GIS. In either case, those are network attached applications 
that start by submitting a request to a web server that is connected to the internet. That's represented by one in this diagram, that incoming request. That web server then passes that request to the Java servlet engine, which is essentially a wrapper for the code that represents GeoServer. So GeoServer, when it then receives this request that has been sub that is passed through from the web server to the Java servlet engine, GeoServer then reads the re information in that request, accesses the necessary data, whether it's data that are stored in the local file system, data that are available through a geospatially enabled database, or even um, data or products that are available through external services such as web feature or web map services, both of which GeoServer supports as a cascading server where essentially GeoServer interacts with those remote services on behalf of the user that has submitted the request to GeoServer, retrieves the necessary data or map images, potentially processes them in some way, and ultimately packages them up to return to the user that requested them. Once GeoServer has completed the accessing of the data and the processing to generate whatever products are requested, GeoServer then passes the, that product back through the servlet engine to the web server that then returns those, those, those data or products back over the internet to the client that requested them. And this process is repeated over and over again as clients submit new requests and new products are generated and returned to those clients. When we're talking about the setup and configuration of GeoServer, we need to then think about um, the, the setup of the system once the installation is complete. The installation basically puts the software onto the system and actually starts the process. But there are additional steps that are required in GeoServer to actually make it operational. So once the uh, installation is complete and the service is running, the setup and configuration is actually performed through the web interface published by GeoServer. Given that, and given the fact that the GeoServer uh, exposes uh, quite a few uh, key capabilities through its web interface, you would understand then that configure action, uh, configuration of GeoServer requires that you log in as an administrative user to GeoServer. On a new instance of GeoServer that has not otherwise been modified, the default username and password for that new GeoServer are admin and GeoServer. Of course, the very first step that any prudent administrator on a new GeoServer instance would do would be to change the password for that administrative user. Once you've logged in, you can actually view and modify the configuration of the system, um, a number of which actually then relate to the capabilities and presentation of the o Open Geospatial Consortium services that are published. Now let's walk through a number of the options for configuring the a new instance of GeoServer or an ongoing instance of GeoServer if you'd like to change its, its configuration. One thing you should keep in mind is that the menu choices that we're going to be seeing here and the options presented by them are really only limited to users that have administrative privileges on the server. So when you log in, unless you have been given broad administrative privileges, many of these options will not appear in your interface when working with GeoServer. But this uh, discussion is to provide you an idea of some of the options for GeoServer that you would encounter if you were to, for example, set up your own instance of GeoServer to publish your own data. 
First, we have configuration options related to the server itself, including information about the current status of the server, you know, relating to the, the amount of memory that it's using and other conditions that, that may be changing as the server operates. You also have access to the logs that are generated by GeoServer as, as it is operating. So if GeoServer is actually generating errors or behaving in um, unpredictable ways or, or you're trying to figure out what GeoServer is doing, you can actually examine the logs for GeoServer and um, try to diagnose what those, what those problems are or just to see um, what the server is doing and how it is logging its information. You also, through the initial setup configura server configuration, provide some basic contact information for the server as a whole, with some of this information actually then being used to fill in parts of the capabilities XML document that is returned by the OGC services published by the system. While the, the, def, the default values are being used for the instance of GeoServer that we're using for this class, you should go in and customize this contact information for any production GeoServer uh, that you are running for your own data as this contact information is key for users of your service to be able to know whom to contact if they have any questions about using the service. There is also information about GeoServer itself, including the, um, the links to the documentation for GeoServer and information about the version of GeoServer that is currently running. You also have um, op the option to uh, modify what are called the global settings for the system where these are uh, settings that reply, apply to the entire server um, and to a large extent they focus on options for the verbosity and style of logging that is going to be used for capturing information about how the server is functioning. You also have options for uh, tuning up the settings for the Java Advanced Imagery Engine which is used actually for generating say the map images and other data visualizations that are published by the service. Finally, you now have access to settings related to the coverage access, which is not very clearly named, but essentially this is, this, these are um, settings that you can use for uh, tuning up the processing resources of the server that are used in support of the requests coming in and being processed by the, this particular instance of GeoServer. Of course, our key interest in GeoServer is, 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 is in its ability to publish OGC web feature, web map, and web coverage services. The configuration options for those services are available in the services menu, and there are some common options that are available for all of the services, including being able to enable or disable the service as a whole for the entire system, and also enabling the strict compliance uh, mode for the system, where GeoServer has gone through the Open Geospatial Consortium compliance process, and there is the site mode, which is OGC's term for essentially their compliance program, where if you would like to run your server in strict compliance with the OGC standards, you can turn this site compliance on. Otherwise, you can turn it off and have a more sort of lenient uh, approach to compliance with the OGC standards. Um, additional information about the services as a whole, including you know, who the maintainer is, the title and abstract for the service, any fees and access constraints or keywords for the service as a whole. So this is essentially um, the, the information that would go into the top of that OGC get capabilities request that, um, that is 
uh, applicable for the entire service. We can also then get down into the specific options related to individual services where different services do have um, some different collections of options where for example for web feature services you can define the maximum number of features that are going to be returned or the service type as GeoServer actually supports the uh, various tiers of web feature services ranging from basic to transactional or complete and also other um, GML specific version styles of presentation and access. Web map services, you are able to provide a subset of spatial reference systems, which is actually a fairly useful thing to do as GeoServer supports many, many spatial reference systems out of the box. And that actually sometimes causes problems for some client applications that are trying to configure themselves based on the get capabilities request. That's because the list of supported spatial reference systems is so long that those clients are sometimes not able to handle that many spatial reference systems in the processing of the XML. So when you're developing a production geo server, you may very well want to specify an SRS subset as opposed to using the default list of all of the supported um, uh, projections. There are also options that relate to interpolation methods, um, ways to limit the memory and processor resources that are used by the web map services, um, options for generating KML, possibly uh, watermarking images that are generated, um, options related to specific image formats and others. So there are many ways to tune up your uh, web map services. Similarly, for web coverage services, you also have the options for specifying spatial reference system subsets from the full sets of available ones. There are ways to uh, essentially establishing the, the way overview, overviews will be used in terms of the different types of overviews and specifying that subsampling methods and also even more importantly in many respects for the web coverage service resource consumption limits and other options. With these uh, settings, you can tune up to a very high degree the information available for each of your individual classes of OGC services published by GeoServer. Next, and perhaps the most important from the perspective of actually building your services, and, and, and working with data to publish via the OGC services are the configuration options for data. Where those include, um, first and foremost, a layer preview area where you can actually look at layers that have been added to the system in a variety of formats and through a variety of uh, interfaces allowing you to do uh, quite a bit of testing to see if a layer that you have added and configured is actually working in the way you, that you expect. The layer preview is, though it is often the one of the last things you do after you've added a layer, it actually shows up at the top of the list here. The first step you actually need to go through though when creating new new layers or adding new data to the system is to actually define or use an existing workspace. A workspace in GeoServer is essentially a container for a collection of related data products. So a workspace is um, essentially where you would collect a, a, a set of stores or data sources that are related to either a conceptually similar collection or a project or other ways to organize information. On the server for the class, workspaces have actually already been created for each of the students and you will see those when you log into the system. Once a workspace exists for the, the data products that you want to add to the system, you then add stores. 
where stores are essentially the pointers or connection information to the specific data objects that you want to have GeoServer access to publish particular layers. So stores, for example, are um, shape files that are sitting on the file system, or geotiffs, or geospatially enabled databases, or remote web feature or web map services. These are all examples of stores for which you need to provide information, either pointing at the files or configuration information pointing to the services. A store must be created that can access those data or services before you can then create layers based on the available stores. Layers are then defined within the service that are based upon a store, but that have specific information related to that layer. So if you have a store that may actually provide multiple feature classes, you can actually choose which feature class would be used by, this, used by the layer that, it, that is available from the store. But layers also provide you with the option of adding layer specific information in terms of styling, attribution, bounding boxes, keywords, and other information. So it's really in the definition of the layers that you have the flexibility of defining the specifics of how that layer should be um, rendered and, and presented. You do have the option of creating layer groups where you can take collections of layers that have already been created and bring them together into a layer group so that you can access them as a group as opposed to only as individual layers. Finally, you have styles, which are defined using the Open Geospatial Consortium styled layer descriptor method. And um, essentially, you can create styles and then reuse them for any of your layers, as long as those styles are defined in a way that is consistent with the structure of those layers and the stores upon which they're based. So styles provide you access to a listing of the currently defined layers, and it's also from the styles area that you can create new styles. Overall, the process of essentially adding data to a GeoServer starts with the addition of data to the GeoServer data repository. In the context of the server that we're using for the class, we can actually, we were actually able to access data stored in each of the user directories on that server so that you can, when you're adding a new data store, um, point to your directory and the data that you have stored in that directory. But the first step is to add data to the server that GeoServer is running on. Once that is done, you need to determine whether or not an appropriate workspace exists for the work that you're going to be doing. In the context of the class, workspaces have already been created for each of the students, so the answer to this question is yes for all of the, all of the coursework. If you're an administrative user for the GeoServer, you can create new workspaces. And so if you need a new workspace and you're an administrator, you can create that workspace and then go to the next step, which is the creation of one or more data stores within that workspace, where those data stores point to a particular data file or remote web map or web feature service. That data store is given a name, which can then be referenced when creating a layer based on the data defined by that data store remembering that you can actually create multiple layers from a single data store, where each of those layers may have their own settings, their own styles that are applied, their own bounding boxes, other layer-specific information 
um, that is different for each of those layers, though they're based on the same data store. Once you've created a layer, you then want to test that layer using the layer preview tool. Once you've con confirmed that that layer is operating properly through uh, being able to be presented in the preview tool, you're ready to move on to creating um, additional layers or creating new data stores or workplaces as needed. Security is another uh, key aspect of the configuration of any geo server where you have a wide variety of options when setting up the security of a geo server instance including the basic settings uh, defining uh, what the essentially the role service and encryption options are this relates to essentially how roles used in the security system are accessed and managed, and then how communications with the server are handled using different encryption methods. You can change authentication methods and models for the system, and this is it's through the authentication area that you actually provide the configuration settings for various authentication providers that may be used for authenticating individual users when they're accessing the system. The passwords area relates to settings uh, associated with the underlying password providers and the password policies used by the server. Users, groups, and roles are one of the key areas where you actually add individual users perhaps assign those users to groups so that you can handle permissions a little bit more efficiently and also manage roles that are defined in the system so that you can also assign users to particular roles again with where roles provide um, the ability to define uh, security settings and privileges um, based on how users have logged in and what roles and groups they've been assigned to. The last two setting areas for security relate to data and services, where when relating to data, you, you're able to define which, you, which essentially roles have read, write, or administrative access to the data products within the servers, and also defines what's called the catalog mode for the server, where that determines what layers or what data are exposed to different types of users um, as being available, um, despite the fact that users may, not, may or may not have access to the data contained within those, those, um, those layers and services. So the catalog mode allows you to expose the availability of layers while still preventing access to, um, to the data in those layers until the user has provided some additional authentication information. Service uh, security settings are really uh, related to, um, again, the, um, the web map, web feature, and web coverage services um, where the access privileges to those services are defined by the user role. So you can potentially say that anonymous users can access web map services, but only authenticated users can access web feature or web coverage services. So this is another area where um, the services and access to the services can be controlled through security settings. Later, we will actually go through a demonstration of the GeoServer interface, but if you would like to look at the, the GeoServer instance that we're using for the class, you can follow the link to the instance of GeoServer that we're using for the class provided in the lecture notes and here in the slide.